Hello, welcome to another OBD2 scanner review. Today we have Launch Creeder Professional 1 to 3 series. Now this is multi-system scanner, so it is something like enhanced code reader. You will be able to go and scan multiple modules in your vehicle, not just the engine. Now when I first tried using this scanner, I had trouble connecting it and I had to update the software so it could work properly. And I don't want to make this video too long, so if you need update guide, it will be in the article linked below. Now I will connect it and I will show you what you can do with this. So first we have to connect our cable to the scanner. Okay, I will go ahead and connect it to my OBD port. And it works same as the code reader. It will start automatically. You don't have to charge it. It is using battery directly from your car's OBD port. Okay, so right now we have three options, diagnose settings and help. You go to settings, the first thing I did was disable this annoying beeper, but if you like it beeping, you can set it up here. Let me turn it off. You can also enable or disable record mode, so that will record your live data, diagnostic trouble codes, and then you can review them later. Then you also can change unit of measure and language, I have those set. So nothing complicated, the setup is easy. We can go ahead and go to this diagnose and we have three options here. First we got this OBD2, that is global OBD, then we have scan. This is exactly the same like engine code reader, you will have 10 OBD modes and you can work with just engine control module. With this scan you can also access different modules other than engine, for example body module, airbag module or ABS module. And then you get this review and what I mentioned before, the recording enable or disable. If you have recording enabled, you can go to this review and review your previous scans. Also live data, basically everything is recording and it is stored in this review tab. So let me show you the basic OBD. Now it will search for correct protocol. My car should be this KWP. And we can go ahead and use all the global diagnostic functions. I think I have some code. The PO500 won't go away even if I erase codes. Let me try it. Let's try reading the codes. So it did erase it actually. But once I start the engine the code will be back again. You can check your emission related information. This is good indicator if your car will pass state emission inspection. I know mine won't because it is complete mess. And you can see that here I don't have single monitor completed. I mean yes, I just erase the codes and that also resets your monitors, but even before resetting I had all of them incomplete. And I'm actually suspecting the bad ECU in this case. You can also check your engine data. You can either check it in text format, like this, or even display them in form of graphs. Now I am currently inside closed garage, I don't really want to start the car, but what I can show you, so you can see the graph, for example we can choose the absolute throttle position, I don't need to have engine on for this one. And you can also select multiple values, so if you want to select multiple values, what you do is select another, and now when you are ready to display them in graph, you need to press escape. And now you get the graph of selected values. So these are live engine values. So I mean now I have engine off. But I can show you at least on that throttle position sensor. Which is this middle graph. Check it out. When I press the gas pedal. You can see throttle opening on the scanner. Let pedal go. And it drops back to zero. This is percentage of how much is throttle open. Once I press the pedal. It will jump to 100%. Now I will be just slowly letting it go. And you will see it also on the data. See it is slowly dropping. As I am slowly depressing the pedal. So you can see the scanner is nicely reacting to what is happening inside the engine. Then you also have the other modes that you know from the code reader. You can check your freeze frame data, you can check your oxygen sensor data, onboard monitoring, or even do EVAP system test, even though I tried it on literally 50 vehicles and it always says that vehicle doesn't support it. Yes, evaporative system leak test not supported. That's it for the global OBD. And now let's check the advanced functionality. Go to this scan. So it stores data for common brands. And that's why I needed to update it. The first part, global OBD, will work fine without any updates. But if you have trouble with this scan tab, you might want to upgrade software first. Let me select Fiat. Now we have to find Punto. So you can either scroll arrow down or you can use right arrow to quickly scroll between pages. And 
and here we have Punto 188 is this version. Now you can either manually select your control module. When I go to manual select, it shows me 38 different control modules that possibly could be here. But for example, there are three ABS control modules. I don't even think that this car has ABS at all. And why you can see three different modules? Because this is complete control module list for all versions of Punto. So in the Punto, you can have like three or four different engines and types. And if you want to select manually, you would have to know which control modules do you have. Or just open each one by one. And if you see communication error, that means that module isn't in your vehicle. But the simple way to do this is to select automatic scan and it will scan which modules do you have for you. Okay, and the full scan is completed and now I have a list of modules in my vehicle that I can work with. We can open ABS module, body module, this Magneti Marelli, this is actually engine control module. Then we have instrument panel and airbag system. So previously we already were in the engine, but with this full scan feature, we should get some additional live data parameters. Let me open the engine. First you have version information, which will give us some more information about engine control module. Check it out. What we have here is programming date, which roughly matches production date of the vehicle. Car is also 2004. So more likely we have original ECU. So you can read default codes. We can try if we get some additional codes. Probably not because code reader should be able to scan all engine codes. Okay, I forgot I erased them, so we don't have any now. And I cannot even start the car because right now it is... I am charging my battery because I run completely low on battery. But you can check the data stream. And if I remember correctly, with this global OBD mode I was showing you before, there were 18 live data parameters. But now, as you can see, we have 51 different parameters. So even for engine control module, multi-system scanner like this will give you more data than basic code reader. Now I have little complaint about this scanner. This navigating through live data can be slow sometimes. And I cannot imagine looking for specific live data if I would have like 200 different parameters. That would take really long time. So if you are an impatient person, this scanner probably isn't for you. But anyways, you get more data and you can also access other control modules. For example, we can check our body module, read fault codes. See, and we have other three fault codes that we wasn't able to read with code reader. But with multi-system scanner, we can read codes from other modules as well. We have three different codes stored in body module. And also when you go to data stream, this module will have its own live data stream list. So we will see completely different live data. And we have additional 49 parameters we can look at and all are related just to body module. So that would be your power windows, power steering, your key, radio, stuff like that. I wonder what is this engine control unit data or code data. Let's check it out. Engine control unit program. Okay, we can also check our instrument panel. And again, we have the same options, but for another different control module. So we can read codes and read live data from another module. In the instrument cluster, we don't have any code. And we can also check the data stream. Here we have only nine live data we can look at. You can also select all data stream that you have displayed in one page with this button. Then press escape and you can see the whole page at once. So advantage of multi-system scanner is that you can go to multiple control modules, scan them for faults, erase codes and read the live data. When you take basic code reader, you can do that only for engine control module. And also, as you could see, even for that engine control module, we had additional data with scanner like this. And one thing I really like about this scanner and why I would recommend it to beginners in OBD. When you go back to that main menu, open help. First you have DLC location information. I mean, this is general stuff about where to find OBD port, but still for a beginner it can be helpful. Then we have DTC library. Let me select the code. We have the PO500, so let's select the PO500. Generic description, vehicle speed sensor. But if I press this book button, it will give me a pretty long guide on how to solve this code. So you can get detailed description for the code. And also, if you go to this abbreviation, everyone that is starting to use this OBD2 scanner, the most difficult thing for everyone is, I guess, understanding engine life data. If you go here, you have 49 different engine data points explained. 
For example, first fuel system status, when I open it, it is really brief, but you don't want to read loads of text anyway, and this is a really good explanation of each data point. See here is for example short term fuel trim, by the way the fuel trims are the most important data for gasoline vehicles, and I have complete video explaining them linked up here. And in addition to that, you can also read some basic stuff about OBD. I would definitely recommend this scanner. I mean, you also can find this stuff online. Even on my website or on my channel, I explain a lot of this stuff. However, why I would recommend this to beginner is that you have little more complex scanner than basic code reader. So you are able to also go to another control modules, not just work with your engine, which is really helpful for solving other issues. Not always you have fault just in the engine. You also have faults in other modules. Scanner is very easy to use, you just plug it in, you don't have to worry about charging, there is no subscription, you get free lifetime updates, and as a bonus you have this full library of codes, engine life data explained, and also basic stuff about OBD. So this can be great pick for home mechanic that is looking to start using OBD, and also learn few new things about engine parameters.